Assalamu alaikum everyone. I am Marina Kashif and from today we will start our lecture of, on digital and logic designs. Digital and logic designs, it is a system in electrical and computer engineering that uses simple number values to produce input and output operations at the same time. For digital and logic design, we are using the famous Thomas L. Floyd Digital Fundamentals book and we are using the 11th edition. So first of all, we will start from the introduction which is the first chapter of the Floyd book and the topic is analog and digital. So what is analog? Analog is the quantity having a continuous value. The values which are present in our daily life. For example, in a day, the temperature does not go from 70 to 71 instantaneously. It takes on all infinite values in between. As we know, in the number line, the number from 0 to 1, there are infinite small values. Similarly, many natural forces are all analog. As we can hear, see, change of items around us. They are all they all are in continuous manner. Time, pressure, distance, every quantity we are measuring in daily life is analog quantity. So the next is digital. Digital quantity is the one having a discrete, unique set of values. The digital technology, which is non-continuous, or we can say it two value discrete is very effective and easy to communicate with. For example, temperature reading after every hour or after every minute or even after every second gives you a discrete data. Digital representation has many advantages. It makes our data very easy to be processed and very easy to be transmitted from one place to another. Also, this system is very reliable. Digital data has a very, very advantage, advantageous when it comes about storage. For example, music when converted to digital form can be stored more compactly and reproduced with greater accuracy and clarity than is possible when it is in analog form. Noise, which is unwanted voltage fluctuations, it does not affect digital data as much as it does analog signal. Here is a comparison between analog and digital. In the first picture, you can see the sound is coming through microphone and it is an audio, which is the analog signal, which can be amplified through amplifier and we can hear a loud sound. This whole system is analogous. On the other hand, If we convert this sound into a discrete data and store this discrete data into a CD drive, this whole data is converted into a binary form, which we will study onward. This data is digital and we can, not, can convert it into analog to different processors, to different converters. And this data without losing any information is easily convertible from digital to analog. And through linear amplifier, we can amplify our sound and we can hear it. The difference main in these two can be seen through graph. In this graph, there is a continuity and we cannot eliminate the noises. But in this, there are only discrete data are present and we can easily eliminate the noises and can get easy information. So there is a competition between analog and digital. In our real world, every data is analogous. For example, uh, music uh, through microphone, we can convert our analog data to digital by converter. Then we can process it, store it, communicate it. Means we can use memory chips. And then again, we convert this digital data to analog through different converters, which can be our speakers 
and the same music can be heard by our real one. All those pictures which you can see here is the competition between analogous and digital. Here's analog clock and here's the digital clock. Which one is more precise? Definitely this one. Similarly, the voltmeter, which can measure the voltage value. Which one is more precise? This because it can give us up to two decimal places value very easily. Similarly, you can see the analog button of a game remote. And here is the discrete form of it. So we have some points which we have to think about. We should think of an example in our daily life, which is entirely analog. There should be a system around us, which is both digital and analog at the same time. Third one, there is definitely a system which is entirely digital. This is for you and I'm waiting for your comments. You will search a system which is completely analog and will answer me on comments. So what is the need? Why we convert analog data to digital data? Because we have information we need on off timing. Above a certain level is on high one state or true. Below a certain level it is off low zero state or false. We have introduced a discontinuity with when a signal goes from one to zero or zero to one. This means we cannot say what the exact value is at the time of transition reduces complexity of signals and the solutions to work with the signal to deal with the digital signal we need to deal with binary algebra to deal with an analog signal we need to deal with calculus to approximate and calculus is far complicated than the binary algebra examples of our daily life the input and output of traffic intersection is in digital form cars presence at an intersection Car present, magnitude is 1. No car present, magnitude is 0. Status of traffic lights, red on 1, red off 0. Very simple. But on the other hand, if we see this data of our heartbeat in analog form, you can see there are many fluctuations which uh, need to be eliminated. But if we convert this data into digital, we can easily tell when the values are low and when the values are high. Low and high. Representation of physical quantities are called signals. Uh, there are two types of signals in our daily life. Analog signals which are continuous, which can be represented by sine waves. For example, our voice, uh, our different electronic devices. Uh, they are, uh, the range is continuous, record sound waves as they are only used in analog devices. Digital signals are discrete signals, unique signals. They can be represented by square waves computer, optical devices, and electronic devices. They are very discontinuous, convert into binary waveform, and they are suited for computer mobile means for information technology. Digital design overview. How can we design a digital system? So the mechanism is needed to represent the two values that is typically accomplished with a switch that can be on or off. Basically, a switch is a transistor, transistor, uh, and transistor is an integrated circuit. An IC consists of very large number of transistors interconnected with circuitry and packaged into a single silicon microchip. A typical processor chip has millions of transistors. Thank you so very much. Uh, looking forward for the next lecture, and the topic of the next lecture is ADC, Analog to Digital Converter to GAC, digital to analog converter sampling.